good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's uh, Saturday, the 2nd of October, uh, 12.30, and Dr. Sama has kindly agreed to come uh, on behalf of the Graduate Student Center, uh, the Graduate St Status Summit that we have. And uh, let me introduce doc Dr. Uh, Sumita Sarma, uh, who teaches in the, uh, who is a professor of management here at California State University of Bakersfield. She's also the director of BREC, which stands for Business Research Education and Education Center. She received her PhD in Entrepreneurship and Innovation from the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Uh, prior to joining us, she comes with extensive um, experience at, in different organizations, uh, as well as different uh, higher education institutions. Uh, her biography, if you would like to know more about her you know, outstanding qualifications, that is an honor that she's teaching here with us at CSUB. It's in our program. And without further ado, I want to give all my time to your presentation. So thank you again, uh, Dr. Surma, for presenting to us. And uh, it's all yours. And uh, there will be a chance for questions later on. Thank you. OK, thank you so much, Dr. Vega, for the wonderful introduction. And uh, welcome to you guys who are here today. So what do you think without leadership, what's going to happen? Friction, confusion, and underperformance. So, you know, come apply to our nationally ranked MBA program here at CSUB and discover the business leader in you. Keep in mind that MBA is a degree in business leadership. Now, today, before I teach you guys how to write a winning personal statement and a resume, let's first see why you need to be thinking seriously about applying to an MBA program, okay? So as you can see here in this graph, this is the percentage of companies uh, that have been uh, hiring MBA grads uh, since uh, 2008 up until now. Now the gray bars here uh, is because, uh, you know, uh, because of the COVID uh, pandemic, the numbers might have dipped a little bit. And you might have heard from some of your friends, maybe who are MBA graduates saying that there has been some uncertainty in the job. But, you know, keep in mind that in 2021, MBA hiring is for a solid rebound and it's going to continue for the next couple of years. So around 92% uh, of employers say that they are planning to hire MBA graduates. And this statistic is as per the GMAC, uh, which is the Graduate Management Admissions uh, Council. Now, are you a little bit curious as to which industries hire the most MBAs? And here you go. So right at the top, as of now, is the consulting industry. And when we talk about consulting, think of you know the big three like McKinsey, uh, Bain, Boston Consulting Group, but then keep in mind that there are a host of other companies in that industry. Now, the second one, the healthcare and pharmaceutical, as we all know, that industry really came to the fore in 2020 with increased focus and investment in public health followed very closely by these high-tech companies like Amazon, Google, Microsoft. Now, these uh, tech companies, they have seen their value skyrocket as COVID-19 has forced us to be increasingly um, digitally oriented, right? And for MBAs, uh, this is actually very good news as tech companies look likely to keep increasing their hiring. Next, we have the fast-moving consumer goods industry. Think of companies like you know, PepsiCo or Anheuser-Busch, maybe that is where your favorite beers uh, come from. Uh, they are also looking to hire more MBA grads. And last but not the least, startup companies. Uh, you know, they are looking for MBA grads who can think strategically and entrepreneurially, can think sustainably, are good communicators, and know how to be agile and versatile. And what has happened is COVID-19, as I said before, it has really triggered growth in certain startup areas uh, relevant to our 2020 lifestyle changes, right? Like including areas like digital health, home fitness, educational technology, and digital entertainment, okay? So see, these are you know, great reasons as to why you should be thinking seriously about applying to grad school, okay? Now, when you apply, did you know that the MBA admission committee, which I'm going to refer to as ADCOM uh, here in this presentation, spends just few moments to determine if you're a good fit for their program. 
And within those few moments, you want to make sure that they have something that grabs their attention. Two of the artifacts that really grab their attention are the personal statement and your resume. So guys, uh, please gear up and put on your seat belts for the next 30 minutes or so as I take you through the process of crafting a winning personal statement and resume for your uh, MBA applications. And towards, uh, towards the end, I'm going to wrap it up with a Q&A. Sounds good? Okay, I see you nodding, guys. Okay, <laughs> now when we talk about the personal statement, remember that it has got different names, okay? It could be called the statement of purpose, uh, statement of intent, and sometimes it could be just called essays, where they would give you some specific prompts. So basically, uh, the personal statement shows why you want to enroll in an MBA program and what role it's going to be playing in your business career. So for instance, the MBA here at CSUB wants you to include uh, you know, your background, uh, your goals, and also how the MBA can help you achieve those goals in your personal statement. And personal statement is roughly one page. Uh, you would be using you know, traditional font uh, of 11 or 12 uh, with enough white space so that the statement is legible and single or double space as per the requirements of the university. And we are going to talk about that a little bit more later. Now let's now see what exactly is going to be the content in your personal statement, right? If there is a essay specific prompt, well and good, but then most of the schools, including CSUB, they would just ask for your personal statement. So in that case, these are some of the components you want to be including in your personal statement. First, demonstrate your interest. Why you want to enroll in this MBA program and why now? Specify your goals. Where will you end up after doing the course? Show your research. Do not copy and paste your personal statement for every application for different business schools. Fourth one is demonstrate your fit. What do you bring to the table? How are you, your goals aligned with the school's values and culture? And the last component is communicating your plan of action. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into each of these components, okay? The first one, demonstrate your grit. Now, as you can see, I have kind of you know, put these two main questions here because the ADCOM really wants to, to know why you want to enroll in this program. And here the priority is not whether you can do the program, it's about whether or not you are going to be thriving in such an MBA program. So you have to go beyond the justification of you know, generic statements like, okay, this is going to be good for my career goals, uh, but then really go beyond and show them why this is important for you, okay? And then the next thing is, why now? Why do you want to do this MBA program? Maybe say right after your undergrad degree, uh, rather than waiting for you know, a couple of work experience, right? Or how is the pandemic affecting your decision? Or are you trying to switch jobs? Are you really committed to the two years of business schools, which could be pretty intensive and rigorous at times? Or are you just feeling lost and looking for direction? In short, make sure that you don't, do not leave the ad com guessing about your motives. State the why very, very clearly along with the why now, okay? Okay, now the next component is specifying your goals. So here, you know, again, the ADCOM really prefers serious candidates who have thought seriously about the program because, you know, the success of the alumni adds uh, to the brand and prestige of the school. So please make sure that you're including both your short as well as long-term goals. Short meaning, what do you plan to do immediately after you graduate? And long-term would be more like what you plan to do, say, a decade from now. And even here, don't forget to answer how this particular MBA is going to help you achieve each one of those goals. And the goal could be maybe you are just looking for a promotion in your current job. And most of the, most of the times that's the case actually. Or maybe you're looking to start a new job. Or maybe you want to have your own startup, right? Launch your own new venture and want to learn about entrepreneurship in the context of the MBA program. Now, the third component is do due diligence, do your research, okay? 
because each MBA program is different and it's going to impact your career path in different ways. So please do not just copy and paste your personal statement for every application, especially if you're applying to multiple schools, okay? Do due diligence so that you come up with a statement that is unique to each of the program. And it really shows them that you understood the school and their program, okay? And also the adcom kind of wants to know what exactly is the attractiveness of the school or the program that you're applying to. And in the meantime, if you have visited the school or spoken say with current students or alumni, make sure that you include that too. Or say you are interested about certain classes or maybe you know some uh, professors, make sure you're including all of those and why, uh, because that shows your commitment to get involved in the community. And the more details that you could provide in the st uh, statement actually shows that you have done your due diligence, your homework, your uh, research. So, you know, uh, this is kind of a very important component that you have to showcase. Okay, the fourth one is how do you demonstrate your fit? So this is almost like, you know, uh, say when you start a new business or maybe a company introduces a new product line. So when they do that, uh, what they want to, you know, figure out is, does this product have a product market fit? Meaning, are there sufficient people who are going to be buying this product or service that you're offering new? Similarly, in this case, you are trying to show them that you are a good fit for the MBA program or the business school that you are applying to. And it has happened that, you know, imagine that, you know, you and your friend have both applied to the same school or to different schools. Now, even with a perfect GPA, say both of you, and high, say, GRE or GMAT scores, you might one day find that your friend got admitted into the program, but you uh, didn't. Uh, because, you know, there could be a reason. Because the adcom here is not just looking at the numbers. Uh, it's kind of really wanting to know what you specifically can bring to the table. So it's kind of more about you and you know how do you really have a symbiotic relationship, especially when you're you know, in the graduate school, okay? Uh, so for instance, uh, the program here at CSUB, it promotes uh, you know, uh, advanced business education in our region. So if you are someone looking for you know, abundant networking opportunities to business leaders and government leaders here in Kern, as well as Los Angeles, then this could be the best fit for you, in addition to other reasons, of course. Uh, or for instance, look at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. They really prioritize social impact. Uh, so you know, that program could be best for people who want to maybe launch their own social ventures or maybe work at an NGO. Secondly, your personal statement must sound like you. It must convey your personality and your grit. Needs to have a compelling story uh, and an honest uh, writing voice, okay? That's kind of very important. And uh, keep in mind that uh, schools sometimes actually decline uh, prospective uh, applicants if they have failed to communicate this fit. Fit with what? fit with the school and its community, okay? Okay, the last but not the least component of the personal statement, communicating your plan of action, meaning that be specific about your game plan. What do you intend to do? Is it banking an investment that you want to go to or is it high tech or are you planning more like, you know, doing a startup on your own because your career path is not going to manifest on its own and you really need to show the adcom the steps that you would be taking to reach that goal. Okay, uh, then again, think about, you know, how would you contribute to the experience of the other students? Uh, are you kind of like a team player? Um, are you planning to say, uh, engage, you know, in some center activities or maybe join a club? And what mark would you be leaving uh, on the school when you graduate? Uh, because, you know, uh, will you be someone that they could be really uh, proud of? Uh, because, you know, as the assistant dean of uh, admissions at Yale, he says that he looks for students uh, who he identifies as unselfish leaders, uh, meaning uh, those students who simultaneously try to improve, the, improve others, uh, and at the same time, they are not opportunistic. 
And now when you click on this link, you would actually find more information uh, about this. Uh, please feel free to do that at your own pace. And I have reproduced here, you know, two outstanding personal statements. The first one is from the Fox School of Business. Uh, it is, as you can see, more like a general personal statement, and they uh, call it the statement of goals here. And this one uh, from Yale uh, is more like where they have a prompt. So, you know, uh, read this, you know, later on because it would really give you some good guidance here, okay? So now we have seen what is going to be the content of your personal statement, right? What you're going to be including in your statement. Now, let me quickly show you how do you actually write that statement. So there are four steps. First step is what we saw just now, brainstorm your ideas on the five components that we have discussed. Second, develop an outline with an intro body and conclusion. Third, write the first draft actually, and fourth, edit and refine the work before you hit that submit button. Now, let's very briefly look into each of these steps. Brainstorming your ideas is basically you are doing like a brain dump, right? You could take a pen and a paper, you could use your tablet, laptop, computer, but just, you know, get all your thoughts on paper so that could serve as your starting point as you begin to create your outline and the first draft. Now, when you do the outline, make sure that it has got these three things, three sections, uh, introduction with an attention grabbing hook with a brief introduction of yourself and the background and the main body where you're going to be writing about your relevant experiences and achievements uh, that relate to the field. Here again, you know, don't go on and on about like 10 examples, rather, you know, focus on maybe a couple uh, that you could meaningfully explain as to how they relate to the MBA program and your professional goals and what you can bring to the table. And then in conclusion, it's going to be more a brief summary of the info that you have already presented in the body. So this um, outline is going to serve you, especially when the school is not providing any specific essay prompts. Uh, this is more like, you know, any other essay that you write or any other paper that uh, you write, okay? The step three is actually writing the first draft. So once you have that brain down and you have thought about the outline, what will go where, you actually write it down and then check back to see if you have satisfied the five components in this case. Fourth step, very important one. Edit and refine your work before you hit that submit button or you know upload the personal statement. So here, what you would be doing is making sure that you have followed all instructions uh, carefully. You know, proofread your grammar, spelling. Use something like Grammarly.com, and always remember uh, that the personal statement is just one page. And I have seen at times, sometimes you know, if you have more experience or otherwise, I mean, it's easier to write more. So if you land up with something like three pages or four, make sure that you are, you know, doing away with the clutter, you know, taking away that waste and make it leaner so that it fits into one page. And the fourth thing is sometimes um, our best ideas don't come when we keep on sitting and staring at the computer and trying to write it down. So make sure that you're taking a break, walk away and come back maybe with a fresh uh, set of eyes or uh, it's a very good idea to ask someone you trust uh, to read and review your personal statement and to give you some feedback. Now, when you do that, make sure that you give them sufficient amount of uh, time. Don't just say, you know what, I'm sending you my statement. Uh, please, can you uh, give me some feedback by end of today? Uh, give them time. Okay, so this is kind of just a reiteration as to, you know, what are some of the mistakes you want to be avoiding in this personal statement? Don't ramble, please be precise and keep it to a page. And I highly encourage you to use uh, a writing editor. And uh, for an example, I'm giving uh, here this HemingwayApp.com. So this is a free editor. And I have extensively used this editor, not only in my master's, but most, uh, you know, most profoundly in my PhD program. So because the goal is that a sixth grader should be able to read and understand what you have written in your personal statement. So when you click on this editor, you will, it will bring you to a page that looks like this. 
So basically what you do is copy and paste your personal statement here. And once you do that on the right hand side, it's going to give you some feedback. So as you can see here at the top, it shows you the readability, which is grade six, and it is good. Uh, most often for me, what I have found, the moment I put it there, it shows, okay, grade like 16 or grade 14 and poor. So what do you do is, you know, below this, you would actually find some feedback where they would give you some word choices or, you know, how you can correct some of the sentence structure, use of, you know, different verbs and uh, words like that, okay? So as you edit there on real time, you're going to get the feedback here. Okay, it is now improving. Uh, so it's a great way. It's uh, an interesting way to use this uh, editor, okay? Second, as I said, do not just list the facts, especially the examples of your experiences or achievements, explain them. So kind of really use maybe one or two examples to explain meaningfully how you have applied your skills to your career and how you plan to do that in the MBA program. Do not just cite you know, too many examples with little substance. Third, do not repeat everything that's on your resume. Fourth, don't exaggerate. Avoid being melodramatic or uh, monotonous. And fifth, be humble. Business schools want team players and a personal statement that is all about you is likely to come across as self-centered and egoistic. So be humble and uh, you know, remember to acknowledge uh, supporting players in your life, maybe you know, teachers or coworkers, uh, friends, et cetera. Okay, before I end this section on personal statement, I wanted to just let you know what are the different types of achievements uh, that you could include in your personal statement. So, you know, this could be awards, uh, you know, such as trophies and medals, could be honors. So if some of you, and I know some of you are in the Dean's list, so that could be a good thing to include that too, saying that, okay, you are in the Dean's list since, you know, so-and-so semester. Uh, or if you have made any presentations or public speaking engagements or any publications like with a professor or you know, on your own or any kind of scholarships. So these are some of the things that you could, should really highlight in your personal statement, okay? Now, before I go and start talking about resume, uh, I thought that it would be nice to have kind of like a small break with a Kahoot. Uh, I had just have around six questions. So you could use any of your smart device, uh, laptop, tablet, or computer, uh, type in kahoot.it. And then, you know, as I will uh, go out of this, you can enter the pin and start answering that question. So uh, let me... Mm, go to my Kahoot. It is generating a pin. Okay, here is the pin, 4932226. Okay, the players are now showing up and it should get going in a while. What do you think this could be? Personal statement and it's different names. Okay, statement. Yeah, I mean, one person got it right, but yeah, definitely, you know, statement and purpose. It could be referred by different names. Just, you know, the terms could be so different. This is an important thing to uh, keep in mind, an important takeaway. I'm curious as to how many of you are going to get that right. Okay, four got it right. Yes, it should be one page. So we have Arctic bison leading at the top, followed by space lemming. Okay, awesome.
Absolutely, this is true. That counts as a great personal achievement that you could include in your personal statement. Arctic bison still at the top has the highest answer streak of three. Okay, that's great. Mm, all of you got it right. Of course, absolutely. Be humble. Arctic bison still at the top, followed by space lemming. False, yes, yes, false. Should not be using those high flown words and we'll see in a while. <laughs> You know, why not? Okay, Arctic bison still leading at the top. Great, awesome. Yes, there you go. Awesome, great. And uh, thanks to each one of you, you got most of it right. Okay, Arctic bison is at the top, followed by space lemming, followed by creative rhino. Again, thank you so much for participating in this Kahoot. Now let me go back to my PowerPoint slide because uh, we need to now talk about uh, other things uh, like the resume. But then what I found, you have been paying attention and you got all, almost all of the Kahoot answers right. Uh, but you know, just keep in mind, those are some of the important things, okay? Okay, now on to resume. Now, did you know that Resume is actually the first document that the ad com reviews and that it can make a lasting first impression. So while your personal statement was all about the why, the resume is all about the what. What have you done? What is your qualification? What was your experiences so far and so forth? So it is actually the backbone of your application package, okay? Okay, now before I start speaking about the resume and show you how to do it, I thought I would just show you a funny uh, YouTube video. It's kind of like a minute long. So watch this. I'm ambitious, opinionated, and I love a good debate. I'm a dick. I would love to be part of your in-horse design team. It's just too darn to spell check. Your team needs me. My parents think I'm spectacular. My ability to think outside the box, create synergy amongst my team, as well as leverage my core competency has been a real game changer for me. Blah, 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 blah. I'm an ideas guy. I don't work. Please find my resume attached. There's nothing attached. I would have attached it, but Netflix is the thing. Job experience, Baker, Roots Bakery, December 2014 to January 2015. Paralegal, Owens & Owens LLC, March 2015 to July 2015. I get fired a lot. Job experience, HR manager, 2007 to 10, assistant to the HR director, 2015 to present. And those years in between, well, just a big pool of ayahuasca vomit. Awards and achievements, prom queen, I peaked in high school. Skills? Word processing. I also know how to chew my own food. References blank. Everyone hates me, and you will too. References, Teresa Brown. At the same number as mine. That's me, but in a British accent. Oh, pip pip cheerio, kibbles and bits. Interests, member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. Lock your office door, not that it will help you. <laughs> Okay, so that was, you know, kind of a funny video. And by the way, you do not have to include references in a resume unless you are specifically asked to. And at the end, I do have a slide that shows that. Okay, so let's now talk a little bit about what you would include in your resume so that your resume is business school ready. And although I show here six blocks, uh, it's, you know, uh, mostly the Heather uh, summary experience, uh, education and additional information, okay? And uh, here, you know, just uh, to recall, because I know I skipped a slide before, just so you know, uh, when you're writing a business school resume, 
uh, most of the times uh, the uh, candidates are not ready. Uh, sometimes, you know, they would be working in a job and they may not have written a resume in the last three to four years because they were in that job. And even if they had written one, they might have just written it for a job. But it's very important to write a good one because that is kind of the snapshot that gives a uh, you know, all of your professional and personal idea of exactly who you are to the ADCOM. And again, you know, keep in mind, uh, you would have that slide later on, uh, the resume is like a marketing tool and it's not your biography. And uh, that is the reason why I'm telling you that these are some of the things that you should be including in your resume, okay? Uh, here is a template. Once again, the resume, is one page normally, unless you have a lot of experience so that it flows to the second page. So the first thing here is the header where it has your name, your telephone number, email address. You don't have to give your street address, but make sure if it flows to the second page, you are including your details, especially your name, at least in the second page as well. Then you have this summary, which communicates your core brand and competencies. So here you really want to bring to the fore as to what is unique about you. What is your unique value proposition? And it often is going to include, you know, some years of your experience and uh, bullet points of your key achievements. So here, you know, uh, in the summary, you would want to keep it to just say, you know, around four lines followed by, you know, few bullet points, not more than that. Now, when it comes to experience, you would be highlighting your work experience in reverse chronological order. Now, if your company is well known, then you do not have to give any company description. However, if it is not well known, say you're working for a small business or like a startup, then make sure you're adding at least a one line description of your company. And when you're talking about your experience, uh, you know, uh, give you know, some concrete actions that you might have done. Okay, quantifiable results, uh, including budget and number of people that you might have managed. And again, within experience, uh, try to highlight any leadership uh, position that you might have had, because uh, business school is all about leadership. So, you know, you can highlight instances like, say, where you have led a group, or maybe you have led a team, or maybe even a project or you might have organized maybe a company-wide or department-wide uh, social event. Uh, even, you know, all of these things actually really count when you talk about your experience. Now, this additional work experience is only for people who have more than 10 years of experience, okay? And in that case, uh, if you're one of them, you would just, you know, uh, list the employer and the job title. You're not going to go into the job details uh, here. Uh, then uh, you start writing about your qualification, educational qualification, your professional degrees, your certification, again, in reverse chronological order. And then in additional information, you can include things like, say, um, language uh, competencies. Say, for instance, you speak uh, three languages, including English. Then you do not have to list English because it's kind of like a given uh, because you've written your statement and everything in English. But then if you also uh, speak, say, Spanish or French and Italian, uh, go ahead and put those as your language skills. Any other relevant skills, uh, volunteer work, including you know, community service uh, and our interests could be listed here uh, in this additional information section, okay? So this slide just captures actually what I have already uh, talked about. Uh, these uh, six you know, blocks, uh, five of those are actually the important ones. Now again, pay attention to these things. Uh, I can't you know, uh, reiterate enough uh, how important it is, you know, uh, to mind the language that your resume should be direct and concise. Uh, again, you know, you can use that editor that I had referred to earlier, even for your resume and uh, quantify. Uh, so if you just say that, okay, I help to grow the revenue of a business line, that is not as impactful as saying that my strategy led to a $15 million increase in revenue in six months, okay? Third thing, do not use technical or industry jargon, 
You never know what the background of your ADCOM member will be. They may not be familiar with your industry or your technical line of work if you're working there. Number four, your resume must complement your personal statement. They should not be an exact replica of one another and neither they should be very disjointed. So for instance, uh, if you have say written about, um, you know, in your personal statement, uh, you have focused on impact that you have had during a particular project at your job, make sure that project is mentioned in your resume. Another instance could be that, you know, you may not get a chance to write about your extracurricular experience in your personal statement. And then you don't want the ad com to think that you don't have any extracurricular experience. So in this case, you know, go ahead and write that at least in your resume. And the fifth thing is that limit the resume to one page unless you have a lot of experience or unless you are applying to an executive MBA program. And again, later, you know, watch this uh, short video link here where they talk about uh, as to what the ad committee looks for uh, in MBA applicants. Now here, because we have used both the words CV and resume, I just thought that I'll talk a little bit about how they are different from one another. The CV, uh, they call it the curriculum uh, vitae or the curriculum vitae, uh, anyhow that you pronounce that. So that's the CV and uh, the resume is what we were talking about uh, today. And there are three main differences actually. So the first difference is in function. So Many people in academia, such as you know me, when I applied, say, for the professor job, so we use a CV because it covers all of the person's accomplishments. Okay, uh, so that way, you know, uh, we can land a position teaching or researching at a college or university. However, a resume is mostly used for non-academic jobs and when you're applying to grad school. So, okay, so that was the functional difference. The next difference is in length. So as you have seen, the resume is one page or maximum, you know, it could be two pages. However, the CV could be a few pages or even a few dozen pages, you know, because as someone gains more credentials and experience, uh, their CV is going to get longer, right? So it really covers everything someone has done in their professional life. Uh, but on the other hand, you are uh, going to have everything you have done like uh, in one page uh, when it comes to resume. And the third difference is the specificity. It's uh, closely related to, you know, what I have already said about the length. Uh, so now if I am using a CV, uh, I would be able to use the same document for every job or research position that I might apply to if I am applying say within academia. Uh, I will definitely need to update it regularly, right? Uh, but the file itself doesn't have to change. Uh, I hope it makes sense. On the other hand, the resume is more specific because you are going to be tweaking it and customizing your resume depending on whether say you're applying to grad school or maybe applying for a job or maybe you, know, you want to move up in a company or switch fields uh, and so forth. Uh, so those were, you know, uh, the differences that you should keep in mind. Now, before I open up for questions, I just wanted to talk a little bit about our CSUB's uh, MBA and the mission and goals. This is something that I had already referred to earlier. And uh, the value here is that uh, CSUB's MBA offers outstanding economic value in terms of its total costs, which is much less than most private or online universities. And I strongly encourage you to go check this uh, website at your own pace uh, for more uh, details, uh, application requirements and deadlines and so forth. You could also email uh, at mba at csub.edu for more uh, information if you want. So uh, that was uh, all that I had. And again, you know, thanks to each one of you for attending and participating in this uh, discussion. And now I'm open for questions. Well, my question was more specifically for myself, um, but there was a lot of good information in their general questions that I had answered in the presentation. So um, I was wondering if an MBA is something that um, would be useful if I was looking to go into human resources. 
Yes, of course. I mean, you could do an MBA and, you know, uh, focus more on human resource, like as a major, and then, you know, uh, go on to your, you know, desired uh, field. That way. Yeah, because I also was looking at an MPA. So I was wondering which one seems more, I guess, which would be like a better uh, choice for someone that's looking to do like organizational development type of work. Mm -hmm. See, ultimately, you know, uh, it might be helpful if you can maybe, you know, uh, talk to, uh, say, the advisors for both the MPA and the MBA program. Uh, but, you know, coming from me, I would say that MBA seems to be a good fit for you for what you are trying to achieve. But then, you know, uh, I would again hold it because, you know, sometimes MBA may not be for everyone, depending on, you know, uh, what your expectations are, what are you looking for? And sometimes, you know, if you have uh, too much of experience, and I'm not saying, you know, uh, uh, sometimes for people, they might feel that, you know, they need to do something more specific rather than, than say, doing an MBA. Again, in your case, uh, it could be something, you know, specific that you want to do. And uh, what I would say is, you know, maybe reflect and see uh, about those five components that I have uh, talked about and see where it fits in, you know, MBA versus, you know, MPA and uh, which one could serve you uh, better in your professional life. Okay, thank you for your time. Of course. By the way, the slides will be available as a PDF later on. You know, you'll probably get an email. And I see Beth has a question. Go ahead, Beth, go for it. Um, hi, Dr. Sharma. Um, what if you don't have a very illustrious um, work experience? I mean, I really feel like that kind of hurts me, you know, and um, unfortunately, I have a lot of um, blocks of unemployment. You know, I had family issues where I had to take care of my great grandmother. Um, another one, I had to help my sister while she was um, getting her nursing degree. So I was kind of a nanny for her and her kids. And I've had experiences with employers and they were just like, oh, I'm sure you were doing that. But I mean, I was, I was, my grandmother was just at her, her limits. I had to take care of my great grandmother, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, see, Yvette, uh, when you show these gaps, in your resume, I know the funny video kind of, you know, did not portray it well, but uh, trust me in this modern uh, day and age, uh, people are more acceptable of uh, these gaps in your career because they do understand that you might have, you know, had some personal stuff that you needed to take care of. And uh, now we are seeing more and more people uh, like, fresh undergrads applying to MBA school and getting accepted and they go ahead and do a great job because initially it was that you know you need to have like five to six years of work experience before you even think about applying to MBA uh, grad school right but now you know things have kind of changed uh, and there are different reasons why this is changing it's the pandemic or maybe you know they are maybe some of the schools are more open-minded uh, that they are accepting a fresh undergrads. So on one hand, you know, accepting fresh uh, undergrads. And on the other hand, when you're talking about your career, which is kind of maybe not continuous, uh, is what I see is your concern. Uh, you know, never mind about that. I mean, just be prepared. Uh, so, you know, if you apply to a school, which has say an interview, just be prepared to kind of, you know, uh, explain to them if they ask about those career gaps. But I do not see how that should stop you from applying to uh, grad school. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. I will agree that, you know, being proactive in, uh, you know, in your narrative or would you interview them so that they know, you know, don't let them guess. And, and as a man, I apologize, you know, because a lot of times, you know, it's women that bear the brunt, you know, child, you know, and sometimes, you know, they don't advance in careers and all of that, but it's changing. There are more, we have more women students, you know, so my hope is that they'll be changed. But I mean, that's a concern, I agree. Mm -hmm. How about um, any other questions that the rest of you may have? And that was a beautiful addition by Dr. Vega. I mean, that component, and now people are becoming, I think, more sensitive about that, uh, right, Dr. Vega? I mean, 
uh, especially, you know, women, all those, you know, you get pulled in so many different directions. Uh, so uh, that's actually a good thing. But again, you know, it should not stop you from applying. And the, uh, I mean, not, nothing but half or, you know, especially at the university, there are so many women like my, you know, have sisters and men, you know, we're in the wrong, you know, and I apologize for all men because women are just, uh, you know, just as capable, better in many situations. So that's what we need you, you know, carry on. There, um, you bet. Feel confident. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Alice, I see, I recognize you. Natalie, anyone else has any other questions? Uh, this was an outstanding presentation. And uh, like I said, we're really lucky to have you here at CSUB. Um, uh, can you maybe see a little bit about, I know, uh, was it uh, Yvette who said, how do we build the experiences? Can you say a little bit about that? You know, if your resume is still thin, um, what are recommendations you will have? I think you probably touched on that too. Yeah, I mean, uh, see, it's always uh, better to say, get hold of, uh, Inter of an internship if you can, or maybe even a job. Uh, and don't think that any job is low or not good enough. Uh, so if you get that chance, and if you feel that uh, you have the bandwidth uh, to you know, do a job in addition to your uh, school right now, uh, you know, just go ahead and uh, do that. Again, you know, like a short term, you know, job or an internship, because it definitely adds and it shows the committee uh, your, you know, commitment or your grit. Uh, and those are some of the things that they want to see as well, in addition to your just, you know, numbers uh, in GPA. They want to see your grit and they want to see your personality. So uh, that could be one kind of uh, way to get some more experience. Yeah, thanks for that question, Dr. Vega. Did you have uh, something else which I could, you know, maybe clarify? Let me see, Jay, no, no more questions, right? Let me make sure. Uh, Chat. Uh -huh. I, I, we're gonna have in 10 minutes, we're going to have uh, another set of sessions and I wanted to give you a break and I you know, hope you're able to attend the other sessions. Um, uh, uh, somebody direct messaged me asking, how did your time at CSU Bakersfield help you prepare for the real world? Okay, Jay. Um, yeah, so how your time at CSUB helped you prepare for the real world? So uh, I would say it helps you in different ways. So first, you know, let's start with the classroom. Say if you are taking a class, and when the uh, professor teaches you about that topic with some you know, real world examples, they actually give you an insight to the real uh, world, right? So you might be uh, additionally say doing uh, some interactive uh, you know, uh, games or maybe some simulation or maybe some role playing. So within you know, even the safe environment of that classroom, you're still getting an exposure to exactly what is happening in the real world. Now, having said that, now think about the labs, you know, for some of the topics, uh, courses, right? So you do the labs and when you do the lab, you're getting your hands dirty, right? You're actually doing the work. So you know now the real world, how to do that. And in some cases, I know there are extensive field trips uh, that you do. There are, you know, outside surveys and all of that going on, depending on your, you know, uh, topic. So that way, again, you're getting uh, exposure uh, to the real world. And uh, for me personally, you know, say for instance, when I'm teaching entrepreneurship, uh, I do not want my students to actually launch their own venture, but I know there are some professors who did, do that in different schools and the grade is going to, okay, you know, I'll be grading you depending on how you did in your venture. And for a semester, I think that time is actually very, very less. So what I have done doing uh, is, you know, do a simulation uh, where they learn, you know, the tricks and the key principles of uh, entrepreneurship without, you know, losing their own money. So it is kind of, you know, uh, very safe to do that. Uh, and also, you know, have them do something experiential, like, you know, go out and talk to say uh, 10 potential customers, uh, you know, besides your friends and family, go talk to them and try to, you know, actively listen as to what they have to say 
and uh, figure out you know, how you could improve uh, whatever product or service you are thinking of offering. Uh, so uh, again, uh, so, so that is for entrepreneurship. Then for strategy, you know, we uh, do some, you know, small interactive exercises uh, that places you in the shoe maybe of the CEO or the general manager and you don that hat and think, you know, like them and try to come up with solutions. Uh, so I hope I answered your questions, uh, Jay, uh, but those would be the different ways that CSUB helps you prepare for the real world. And of course, the internships and the jobs that students find themselves. Uh, those are great ways, frankly. And let me say that it's also not just what you know, but who you know. You know, go to your professor's office hours, get to know them, nurture that relationship. They know a lot, and all of us are, want, want to help you. Just like Dr. Sarma today, you know, she's volunteering her time. You know, we're here for you. Don't be shy, you know, and uh, uh, do us, you know, carry on. I mean, just know that uh, that's our job, and that's the greatest joy to be able to see you succeed. Our job is for you to do better than us, right? So and work really hard and we'll be pushing you, we'll be supporting you. So it's almost time to leave the room. Don't forget to do that little evaluation there. Thank you, Dr. Sarma, for the outstanding presentation. You know, really enjoyed it. And I'm sure everyone here did. Many of them were expressing gratitude, saying thank you. And I know that somehow the thing just came to me, but you know, just rest assured that everyone here is very grateful. So oh. thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Vega, and thank you once again to all my dear participants who attended this session on a Saturday. Thank you so much.